again, you all know the drill. Uh, don't admit to any crimes, please. And I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see, y'all can see? Uh, Ellen, thank you, yes, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So I'm going to be making it halfway through this PowerPoint today. Um, specifically when it comes to advanced tree topics, the advanced things that you're going to be seeing with trees uh, are going to be balancing techniques. Usually, like that's the most difficult, I think, aspect of trees that you need to know for this class. Um, there are several different types of balancing. So there's AVL balancing, there's 2-4 balancing, uh, there's red-black balancing, and y'all will get to see all of those, I promise. Today, we're going to hopefully make it about half, half of the way through those topics. So gentle introduction should be. So, uh, okay, so kind of just said that. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so just as a quick review of binary search trees, um, a binary search tree is a data structure that is kind of like the next derivative of a linked list. So data is stored in nodes and nodes point to other nodes just exactly like in a linked list, except in a binary search tree, the linked, linked list node, that is the node in your tree, uh, now it doesn't point to one other node, it points to between zero and two other nodes, and it's a hierarchical, hierarchical structure, right? Whereas the linked list, it's kind of just a line, the tree is, well, you know, geometrically a tree. Uh, the advantages of a binary search tree is, as you can kind of just intuitively see by looking at the structure, it's a lot more compact than a linked list. So specifically reaching the end of the structure is a lot faster, right? Uh, in this example right here, let's see, we've got, uh, how many nodes is this? Uh, is that nine? We got nine nodes in this tree in this example. Whereas for a linked list to iterate entirely through to the end of the structure, it would be nine nodes here. We can get through, uh, we have to call three pointers to get to the very, the very end. So as you can see, a little bit more compact, very similar to a linked list. Uh, in this case, you can kind of see generally that the height of the tree is order of log n. Um, specifically, in the next few slides, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking in terms of height of the tree. So, just so that we're on the same page, when I say height of the tree, I mean how many children in the longest path can you find, right? So, for instance, um, if we're looking at node ten. I'm going to say that this has a height of two because the longest path is 14 to 13. So that's two children, therefore height of two. Um, three, I'm gonna say that also has a height of two because the longest path again is two children. And then eight, I'm gonna say it has a height of three. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be consistent with this notation, the way that I'm describing trees. So uh, this will come up over and over and over again. Okay, uh, so the next slide is what I was just saying but kind of like from a different perspective. So while a tree is an improvement upon a linked list, sometimes the order of improvement depends on how far it is from the linked list. So as you can see in the worst case, uh, in this instance, having a tree that gives you no benefit over a linked list, you were literally a linked list, right? So if a tree is supposed to be an improvement over a linked list, but you happen to insert all of the children right in a row, well, you've just, essentially recreated a linked list. So in this structure, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, all of the time complexities that you remember from linked list are exactly identical. Same time complexity to find an element. It's gonna take you O of N iterations to you know, find the last element. Same time complexity for insert, assuming you have the node. Uh, same time complexity for delete, assuming you have the node, exactly the same. Um, and what's really tricky is in trees, you know, how do you differentiate between this test case and the test case in which the tree is balanced? Or better yet, how do you structure the tree in such a way that this never happens? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, okay, so balancing trees. Essentially, I just gave you all an overview. Balancing trees is preventing the linked list, right? Because if you just wanted to use a linked list, you'd be using a linked list. You're using a tree because you wanna do better. So the different balancing techniques that we have are these three. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking about AVL trees. So AVL trees um, circumvent the possibility of creating a linked list by using something known as the balance factor. And uh, at each insert, we are preserving the balance of the tree, 
So AVL trees are going to be closer to ideal trees than a random, a random tree, and I'll prove this later. Uh, specifically because every time you insert an element, you make sure you insert in such a way that you have not destroyed the structure. So balance factor, as you can see the formula right here, balance factor is a measurement um, that you compute for each node. And the measurement is height of the node's left subtree minus height of the node's right subtree. And as you can see, this is going to be either a positive, uh, negative, or zero number. And the numbers, like, as you can see, one here, like, you can essentially think of balance factor as a measure of how skewed to the left is this tree, right? Because if you have a very tall left subtree and a very short right subtree, you're going to have a large positive number. If you have a negative number for balance factor, that tells you how skewed to the right is your tree, right? And so as you can see in this example right here, uh, computing each node uh, gives you a different balance factor depending on the height of the left and the right subtree. Uh, you know, obviously the nodes with no children have a balance factor of zero, right? That's kind of trivial. As you can see, the leaf nodes, which in this case are going to be eight, 11, and 61, all have a balance factor of zero because in this formula, they have no left tree and they have no right tree. So therefore they have it's impossible for them to be imbalanced. What is a little bit less obvious is calculating the balance factor for the nodes that are higher up in the tree. So as you can see, 21 is gonna have a balance factor of one because the height of the left subtree is one and the height of the right subtree or non-existent subtree is zero. So one minus zero is one. Whereas for nine, you take one minus two for the heights of the left and right subtrees respectively, you get negative one. Uh, as y'all can see, kind of intuitively in this tree, we're looking at numbers one, negative one, zero. Those are all pretty low, right? And if you look at this tree, you can see, well, this doesn't really look much like a linked list, right? This is kind of one of the better cases where I think we haven't messed up the balance of the tree too terribly. This looks relatively kind of balanced. And that intuition is formalized with this definition right here. So an AVL tree is any tree in which the balance factor for every node is included in the set of numbers between negative one, zero, and one. So if every node has a balance factor that is at most one or at least negative one, including zero, this is said to be an AVL tree. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there are instances, well, I guess it's not showed on this slide, but uh, there are instances in which um, adding a node actually breaks this, right? If we were to add, let's say 10 right here, uh, and I will draw this later, then you can see 10 is gonna have a value of zero and then 11 would have a value of one and 21 would have a value of two. Now two is no longer included in this set, which makes it an invalid AVL tree and we would have to rebalance. So what happens when we uh, insert a node that breaks the structure? Well, we take care of it. Uh, and again, I'm going to show this later, but specifically there's four different ways that you can take care of an insert, depending on the four possible ways that you could break an AVL tree. And you can enumerate them. There are only four ways that you could possibly break an AVL tree. Uh, the first is going to look like this, and in which you do a single right rotation. So uh, as you can see, you've got, uh, imagine like these are not numeric but this is still a binary search tree. Sorry if I didn't drive that point home. An AVL tree is a binary tree. So the rules of a binary tree have got to still apply here. Uh, I guess for this example, I'm assuming that um, a binary search tree is based on a Boolean comparison, right? This is fair game, right? Like as in numbers to the uh, left of a current node must be less and numbers to the right of a current node must be greater than. I'm assuming that A, B, and C respectively represent like lesser quantity, medium quantity, greatest quantity. Because as you can see in the case where you've got um, a binary search tree that has been arranged in this order, you fix this by moving C down to be a right child of B. And as you can see, this fixes it, the balance factor is returned to normal. Uh, this works in the inverse. If you've got A, B, C, you just bring A down to be a left child of B, balance factor returns to normal. Uh, the two other ways that you can break an AVL tree is if you have something like this. So as before it was C, B, A, you could have C, A, B. 
This is fixed in two steps. So first you switch A and B. And as if, if you notice, this right here is identical to the first case. So this was our first case. Essentially, you can shift this case into the first case and then solve it like the first case. And then as you can see, back to zero. And then once again, just in the other direction. Um, and as so a, a few a few quick notes here. And again, I'm sorry I'm blowing past this. I'm going to actually draw it in front of you all by hand. So I kind of don't want to spend too much time on the slides. Uh, this is just to like kind of give you a, a high like 10,000 foot view. Specifically looking at this tree, uh, I want to notice, I want to make two points. So the first is that although there are four ways in which you can break an AVL tree, uh, please let me click. Uh, yeah, okay. So although there are four ways that you can break an AVL tree, all four of those um, incorrect insertions, as you will, incorrect or unbalanced insertions, converge upon the exact same correct solution. So as you can see, if, the, if you break the tree with an insert that looks like this, you converge upon ABC, uh, you converge upon ABC, converge upon ABC, and converge upon ABC. So while I do recommend that you memorize these cases, you can always intuitively understand that no matter what happens in an unbalanced insert, you are always working your way towards this case. So hopefully that'll help with the memorization. If you get like scared on a test and you don't remember what it's supposed to look like, just in every insert uh, that is unbalanced, where you have to do a rotation to fix the balance, it is always going to converge upon the structure. Um, so that's probably the first thing that I would have y'all notice. And then again, the, the second thing is that these cases are um, in a sense like built upon each other. So the first two cases in, are in which your ABL tree uh, insertion is in a straight line. So this being single right and single uh, single left. And in this naming convention, single refers to the fact that you did one rotation and left or right refers to the last, the direction of the last rotation. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to say that again slowly on the next slide. But as you can see, for a single right, we did one rotation, and the last rotation is on the right. Single left rotation, one rotation, last rotation is on the left. Now for this, this performance right here, this is maybe a little bit more ambiguous because first we have a swap and then we have a right rotation. So do we call this double left or double right? Because technically we kind of do both. Um, but the naming convention, like I said before, is first the number of rotations that you do. So in this case, doubles, this is a double rotation. And then the direction of the last rotation, which in this case is right. So double right is going to look like this and double left uh, is going to look like this. Don't, don't call it right, left. You're going to confuse yourself. Call it double left, right? Double rotation. The last one is like that. So uh, as much as I hate being told what to do, <laughs> these slides do say to draw an example, which I was going to do that anyway. Uh, so what we're not going to cover today is red, black trees. Uh, so this will just be a little teaser for uh, next week. These are cool. Trust me, these are practical. I think red, black is a little bit cooler than an AVL, um, but we're not there yet. So without further ado, I'm going to start drawing stuff. Uh, so let me see. Um, okay, so y'all can see my iPad, right? Please somebody unmute because I, I cannot see the comments. Yeah, we can see it. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, much appreciated. Okay, uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just a quick, a quick little recap, um, specifically of what a binary search tree is. So a binary search tree, I'm gonna formalize this. So binary search tree, let's define this formally. So the constraints upon a binary search tree is that all nodes uh, must have zero to two children. So have between, zero and two children. And then also importantly, all left children are less than the parent node, uh, less than, and uh, conversely, all right children are going to be greater than. Uh, hmm. 
And I'm going to just draw a quick example. So in case you missed it, uh, just so that nobody's fallen off the bus, um, a binary search tree is gonna look something like this. And as you can see, the order of this tree is maintained by the Boolean operator less than and greater than. So, so yeah, um, I think that's fair game. Whereas you can see in this, in this structure, all nodes have between zero and two children. Um, there are instances of zero, one, and two children in the structure. Uh, and also importantly, every node is sorted to be uh, less than its descendant if it's on the left, if it's on the left, or greater than its descendant if it's on the right. So, uh, given this is a formal definition of a binary search tree, uh, we're looking at this here. I'm going to quickly talk about insert and erase. So, insert. Uh, basically, like I said before, is going to be um, O of H time, where H denotes the height of the tree. So as you can see, if this was a length list, then the height of the tree would be equal to the number of nodes. So an insert in the worst case is going to be O of N, whereas we can see this is kind of like roughly log N height. Um, so an insert is going to be roughly log in and a good tree. And again, I, I, I say air quotes, good, just kind of intuitively, you can see that this tree is relatively kind of balanced, but we will formalize this later when we actually do measure the balance. Uh, and then erasing a node can be done in one of two ways. So assume we are going to erase zero. Well, that's no problem at all uh, because it had no children, nothing to take care of, no big deal. If we want to erase a more important node, like imagine we want to erase 50, we now have two choices. Um, we can either choose to replace 50 with this node or with this node. And uh, I briefly mentioned this last week, but the intuition here is that to maintain the sorted order of this binary search tree, uh, these three things must be true. So obviously we're not going to have a problem with this, this first definition, but in order to replace this node 50 with such a, such a node that all children on the left will be less than and all children on the right will be greater than, we either have to pick the maximal element from the left subtree, which as you can see, is greater than everything in the, in the left. And because it was sorted to the left of 50, must be less than everything on the right. Or uh, conversely, we can pick the... Um, minimal element of the left subtree, and this fits the bill also. So just for this case, like if you're designing this like in a PA for the, the search tree, you want to do it one of two ways and just stick to that way. So I'm just going to say for the sake of this tree, I have made the executive decision that I will replace with the minimal element from the right. So that's insert, that's delete. Uh, that's your formal definition. Again, that's mostly review. So now let's talk about ABL. So uh, let's define balance factor. I'm going to call it balance balance factor um, of a tree is going to be equal to the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree. Uh, this fair? So specifically, let's let's do an example. So if we've got a tree that looks like this, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a relatively like normal tree. First, just to you know, kind of ease us into it. So if the balance factor is going to be equal to the height of the left minus the height of the right, let's go ahead and compute that for each of these nodes. So uh, for this node right here, we're looking at uh, height left minus height of right. As we can see, this is zero minus zero. So it's got an AVL balance factor of zero. Uh, and again, that's going to be true of all of the leaf nodes. So we can just go ahead and write that. I hope I hope it's obvious that the leaf nodes are always balanced. Uh, okay, let's do let's do this node. So got height of the left minus height of the right. As we can see, these are both one. So this is also balance factor of zero. For this node, again, height of left minus height of right. Uh, looks like the left subtree is one minus two, negative one. Uh, for B, you can just kind of eyeball that that's a zero. And then for A, again, we can just kind of eyeball that that's negative one. 
right? So we've got what, uh, three minus two? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, uh, two minus three. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm always prone to error. Two minus three. Okay, so it, I hope that's good. Um, if this confuses you, please ask our PT. She will be happy to explain why this is the case. Uh, I did kind of relatively like a, a good case here. I picked a reasonable tree to start with. Now let's start with, uh, I mean, now let's do the same thing on an unreasonable tree. So imagine we uh, just happen to insert our nodes in a way that was not ideal, something like this. So not quite a linked list, but again, not far off of a linked list, right? Like potentially uh, could, it, you could get something like this, just depending on your insert insert order, it could be, it could be this bad, right? So again, not quite a length list, but as before, when, when I said that the insert was going to be O of H, you can see H, would I, would you call this log N? Uh, I don't think so. I think in this case, H is, H is probably closer to N, I think. Um, and again, we can formalize these things later, but as you can see, you can kind of eyeball, this is, this is compact. Whereas this is not very compact. So anyways, uh, let's not get distracted. We are talking about balance factors. So again, the balance factor of any leaf node is going to be zero, uh, which is here. So we can just get those out of the way. Uh, as you can see, for this node, uh, and I'm, I'm going to delete this is in the way. Uh, so for this node, we're going to have height of the left tree minus height of the right tree. And again, sorry to beat y'all over the head with this, like. This is, you know, maybe not the most rigorous math ever, but, you know, for the rest of this review, I'm going to be speed running these calculations. So I just want you all to be very comfortable with it. So here we've got height of left minus height of right. So you can see this looks like zero minus two. So uh, safe to say that that's a balance of minus two. And this is our first case right here of an imbalanced AVL tree. So the example I gave before was balanced uh, as far as AVL goes. Here we've just discovered something. This would be a problem. So we're going to address how you would solve this problem later on. But for now, just recognize that, oh, when you see a negative two, uh, that is imbalanced. Uh, you can see in this case, F is going to be negative two. E is going to be what? Four minus zero. Wait, no, F is not negative two. I'm sorry. You're gonna let me get away with that. Uh, F is going to be three minus one, which is two, right? And then E is four minus zero. D is going to be zero minus five, right? C is minus six. And then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, one, E, also minus six, I think, right? If I, if I messed up, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so if, if, I'm, if I messed up according to this equation right here, then I apologize. Uh, this, this is ground truth. So take that for ground truth. I think this is right. But anyways, the point that I'm trying to make is that as you can see, relatively in a quote unquote good tree, you're going to have uh, balance factors that are between negative one and one. And in what is quote unquote a bad tree, you're going to have balance factors that are way off the map. Like here, you've got a balance factor of ne negative six. Like you can just intuitively see this thing is not very good. So uh, like I said before, there are uh, possible AVL cases. And I said that there was four. So let's, let's go ahead and define exactly what those are. So AVL uh, rotations. So imagine we have three nodes, and that's like the that's like the atomic level for the subproblem. Uh, you can say one, two, and three. When I say atomic level, I just mean like, as in an AVL tree, it can be broken with three nodes. So that's kind of like the simplest way to consider this, because the complex the complexity does start to get out of control, which I will show later. But so with these three nodes, there are five possible ways that we could represent this as a binary search tree, right? And to do that proof of why there's five would be really difficult, so I won't do it, but I do want to show what all of those cases look like. So we might have uh, something like this, 
And as you can see, this binary search tree does follow all of the rules we have between zero and two children. And then as you can see, it preserves sorted order because two is greater than one, and three is greater than two. So as we can see, this is valid. Uh, we could have something in the opposite direction. So we could have three and then two and then one. Uh, and then we could have the bendy trees, which look like this and this respectively. So these are the four possible ways that you could break uh, an AVL tree. As you can see in each of these, uh, each of these occurrences, um, this is going to have a balance factor of negative two. This is going to be two. This is going to be negative two, and this is going to be two. So uh, these are all invalid. And like I said before, these all of these trees, once we rotate them, are all going to converge upon the same tree, which is this. So. Uh, to fix all of these rotation cases, which I'm going to enumerate, I'm going to call these, uh, I'm going to call this number one, number two, number three, oops, my bad, yo, I'm so sorry, uh, and number four, respectively, they're all going to converge upon this case right here, which is balanced. So uh, let's draw out specifically what those rotations look like. So the first rotation, this is going to be your single left rotation. In order to get from here to here, which like I said, they all converge on the same spot. So to get from here to here, uh, we have to bring this node down. So we essentially perform what is known as the single left rotation. So this is single left, right? And that makes sense because you've done one rotation and it's on the left. And then, you know, again, on the right, if we know we're going to converge upon this tree right here, well, to do that, you know, clearly we must move, like three is the node that's out of place here. We've done one rotation and it's on the right. So this is your single right rotation. Uh, and then the bendy ones are a little bit more tricky. Um, so first, what you need to do for this case is swap two and three. Uh, and that's going to get you something that looks like this. So if you if you did swap two and three, you're now working with this tree. And again, the intuition flags should be should, like your alarm should be going off because that is the same as this, right? Like we have essentially just gotten right back to case number one. So this is now case number one. And to make case number one look like this, remember we have to do a single left rotation. So this is going to be our double left double left, right? Because we did two rotations, right? We did this rotation and then this rotation. So therefore it's double. And the last rotation was on the left. So double right, double left. Uh, for this one, it's gonna be something similar. So as you can see, first order of business is gonna be to switch the uh, the two and the one. So we're gonna, we're gonna flip these two around and that's gonna leave us with a tree that looks like this. And from this tree, again, intuition should be going off. This is case number two. And we fix case number two with a single right rotation uh, and back to the convergence structure. And this is double right. Okay, so I just, I just threw a bunch of information at y'all. If y'all are still with it, uh, thank you for paying attention so long. Quick summary. So a binary search tree formalized, the formalized definition is that all nodes have between zero and two children. All left children are less than the parent. All right children are greater than the parent. Uh, the height of the tree is important because that dictates the runtime for insert, erase, so on and so forth. Uh, because we have decided that the height of the tree is very important, uh, we can control the height of the tree by making sure that the tree is balanced. Uh, we formalize the definition of balance with AVL as this balance factor, which is height of the left subtree minus height of the right subtree. As you can see, we had an intuitive example here um, in which a quote unquote good tree ends up being balanced according to the formal definition. And then the quote unquote bad tree is relatively imbalanced according to the definition. And then here we've defined there are four possible ways in which you insert a node to a tree uh, and that node forces the tree to be unbalanced. And these are the mechanisms by which you can restore the balance. So a uh, quick summary of what we've done so far. Let's do an example. So 
imagine oh and uh, by the way another another really important thing to consider is that the the reason that you would have an imbalanced tree is like i don't know if you can see i don't know if i did yeah so i switched from numbers to letters here but the the reason you're going to have an unbalanced tree is because you insert nodes in a bad order right like the in, the order in which you insert your nodes is going to determine whether or not they fall nicely into place or you get stuck with a linked list so let's do an example wait uh, wait sorry i have a question real quick so yeah, like on your on your point about that like uh is it kind of like a whole like pivot point situation kind exactly of like, it is like, exactly it is exactly that so in, oh, okay got it. in in quick sort if y'all remember uh the way that you pivot the list is ultimately kind of random i'm just going to say kind of random uh because in the case of a binary search tree if you're not balancing uh your binary search tree then like imagine your nodes were like in the sequence like a b uh c d e whatever whatever like if this is your order of nodes to insert whichever one you pick first this is your pivot point right and mm -hmm. that, in effect, is kind of like quicksort because you've randomly just decided, well, I, I sure hope that all of these are kind of relatively half of the list. And I sure hope that all of this is kind of relatively half of the other, other side of the list. And so, yes, very good point. Uh, the order of insertion is very similar to quicksort. And the reason that we have uh, balancing is to kind of address that case in which you've picked a poor pivot point. So, yes, excellent question. So assume we have numbers uh, and the input, let's just say random numbers, right? Like nine, uh, one, two, eight, uh, seven, five, three, six, four. So this is all the digits. So just assume that you are making, a, you make, make a binary search tree uh, in this order. So as, as as we pointed out before, we've kind of just like, unfortunately, we get stuck with this as, as the pivot point, right? So if we were to construct this binary search tree, well, we know how to do that. It's gonna look like this, and it's gonna take me a second to actually finish it. Uh, let's see, adding seven, and five, and I hope I don't mess this up. Uh, see, three, three here. Six is here. Four. One is four. One is three. And zero is here. So uh, again, y'all are going to get plenty of experience with this when you actually code the BST yourself. Uh, you're going to get to see exactly how it is that inserting a node, you kind of have to like hop down and make comparisons until you find the right place where you want to put it. This was kind of a speed run. So if I lost you, I apologize. Uh, just for just for fun, uh, we did formalize the definition of balance. So let's just see if we were not going to balance this tree, uh, like what is the balance factor before we've done any AVL balancing? So uh, as we can see, again, all of these leaf nodes are going to have a balance factor of zero. Uh, and then here's where I'm going to start speed running. So if y'all, if I lost you, and you don't remember how to compute the balance factor, or I'm doing it a little bit too fast and you can't do it in your head, just take my word for it because this is no longer the focus of the video. Uh, so, or the, the review. For those of y'all who are live, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so speed run. Uh, and if those of y'all who are live, if I mess this up, unmute yourself, please, because I do mess this up sometimes. Uh, Five. Um, did I? Okay, is that right? Uh, I think, right? Um, I'm just gonna check this for a second. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait, nope. <laughs> Would this be a negative four? All right, because I've got one, two. One, two, three, four. No, that was right. That's gonna be a positive seven. Okay, so again, if if calculating these, you can't just do it like super fast. Don't freak out. That's not really the most important thing about AVL. So 
those of you who I lost, um, watch the recording. This will be done. So let's say that this is just kind of like n without balancing. And I would not say that the height of this tree is on order of logarithmic time complexity. I would say this is closer to the length list, personally. It is just my, my thoughts about this. I don't think finding something in this structure is too much more efficient than just having found it in a length list, right? Because if, if you were looking at something that was like this, that's actually pretty similar to what we just did here. So uh, let's go ahead and build this tree, but let's uh, enforce AVL rules at every insert. So uh, we start with node nine, right? And then uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a little pointer. Uh, okay, so we've inserted nine. And then now we're going to insert one. Uh, let's see, so one is going to go here, and uh, as you can see, the AVL factor is still within the acceptable range, so we haven't messed up yet. Uh, and then let's see, now we insert two, so two is going to be here. And as you can see, inserting a node means that we have to recompute the balance factor of the the nodes that are higher than it. So zoom is going to be negative one, and this is two. So uh, right away, uh, the intuition alarm should be going off because this is the bendy case. Remember, this is bendy case. Specifically, which one is this? This is this is case number four. Uh, this is case number four. And so we we defined earlier that when you see something that looks like this, uh, this is how you fix it. So we we decided that first you have to swap the lower nodes and then now you're in case uh case two and then it's a right rotation so we are in the double right rotation case so let's go ahead and fix this so let's fix this avl tree uh with first a swap so it's going to look like this and then there's one more thing we have to do which is the uh rotation at the end so uh, computing the balance factor. Now we are back in balance. So did I lose anybody? Are we are we good? This this kind of makes sense. Okay. If you're confused, uh, Oma would be happy to answer your questions. Uh, let's keep uh, let's keep moving forward. So uh, let's insert eight, uh, and then let's see. Yeah. So eight. And I'm, I'm gonna just redraw the tree down here for sake of clarity. So we've got this so far. And if we insert eight, that'll end up here. Uh, let's compute the balance factors, which in this case is gonna be uh, here. So as you can see, uh, this is still in balance. We haven't broken our tree yet because every, every node is between negative one and one. So now we're in the clear to go ahead and insert another node. So uh, we're inserting seven. So seven will go here, and uh, we're going to have to recompute these numbers. So seven is here, one, uh, two. Okay, so uh, you can see we have illegal balance numbers. This is no longer a legit AVL tree, so we've got to do something about it. So um, here's where it gets tricky. So when you are thinking about an AVL tree case, the AVL rotation balance happens on the insert. And you're not rotating the whole tree, you're just rotating the part that you broke. And this is, I swear, the most difficult part of this concept. And if you can get your, if you can wrap your head around this, you can wrap your head around the entire concept, I think without too much trouble. So this right here is a subtree of the AVL tree. As you can see, it includes the offender, which as you can see is this node with the unbalanced factor. Uh, and this itself is a test case. So the reason I diagrammed these three uh, possible uh, AVL cases is because it's only ever gonna be one of these three in the subtree. So the subtree of the inserted node is always gonna be one of these three. As you can see, it's this one. We defined this to be case two, single right rotation. 
So looking at the nodes that are in this blue circle that I drew right here, uh, we've got nine, eight, and seven. We've defined that when we see this subtree, we're gonna fix this by doing a single right rotation, which is this. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug this subtree right back in to where it was. So now I'm gonna rewrite the tree. We've got, uh, the other nodes don't change by the way. So we've got two, uh, one, and then eight, and seven, nine. And then uh, quickly computing the balance factor here, you can see that this, this did the trick. So now we're balanced again. And I, this, this is important. Uh, this is the hardest thing that I've showed you all all day. So uh, again, if you have questions about this, probably actually unmute yourself. Because the reason I, I like, I wasn't I wasn't condescending when I was saying like, you know, you need to be able to compute these balance factors. That's not the that's not the hardest thing. This is the hard thing. Uncontrolled complexity. Keeping track of these rotations is going to get more and more and more and more and more difficult the more nodes you have in the tree. And you're going to see later that that actually makes AVL probably not the best choice for balancing a tree because this starts to get like wacky complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, please, please, please. Uh, so I guess the best way to conceptualize what you said here, like with the blue circles and stuff, is like they're kind of like nested uh, rotations and stuff. Yes, and exactly. exactly. After each after each time you do it, you want to recalculate the uh, the value the values for each node to see if it's balanced or not. Right. That's that's basically yes. All yes. Yes. And then it's a recursive call all the way up to make sure that you've actually balanced the whole tree. So excellent point. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, that is exactly the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and insert the next the next node, which is going to be five. Uh, so as we can see, five is going to be here, um, and I don't I don't know that this breaks it. Uh, let's see if this breaks it or not. So five is going to have a balance factor of zero. Uh, it's going to be what one? This is also one. And this is negative two. Oh, okay, so we did break it. Yeah, we definitely did break it. Um, I think, right? Uh, hmm. Five, three. Yeah, I think we broke it. Uh, is that the consensus in, in, in the chat? You, you think we broke it? Because I, I think we broke it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think something needs to happen. Okay, so anyways, uh, like I did before, um, let's see, where is the problematic, where is the problematic case? Seems to be that the problem is now here. Right, seems to be, seems to be like this is the subtree that we now need to rebalance entirely. Um, yeah, so, Let's go ahead and write this over here as we got. So two, eight, seven, as we can see, I think this is what, what this is case number, this is case number three. So this is a double left. So we have to, we have to swap the bottom two nodes and then perform a left rotation. So here we've got to, uh, we've got to swap the bottom nodes and perform a left rotation. So it's going to be two, seven, eight, and then a left rotation to uh, seven, two, eight. Okay, so this is how we fix this, but now we've run into an interesting problem because these nodes right here, although I, I represented these as individual nodes with no children, these nodes do have children and we have to take care of those before we just replace these two blobs, right? Because here, I just drew this blue arrow and I said, oh, you just kind of take this balanced AVL tree and just kind of throw it back in. It didn't cause problems. But now if we want to put our balanced subtree in, we have to think, well, hey, we've got we've got children here. Like, what do we what do we do with these kids? So um, this is like what, what I was hinting at before. This is where it starts to get really, really complex. So specifically, we know that our tree looks like this. So we can we can just start with these nodes. We know it's going to look like this. And then now we have to add all of the children of two. So two had one child and that was one. We have to add all of the children of eight, which we, as we can see was uh, 
nine. And then we have to add all the children of seven back to the tree, which as we can see is five. And yeah, there we go. So now if we compute the balance of this tree, uh, yeah, we're balanced again. Did I lose anybody? Because this this is the important step. This is this is this is what's hard. Lose anybody? Because now now we've got a balance tree again. Um, okay. I'm tr I'm trying to make this as straightforward as possible. When I took this class, this took me so so long to figure out. All right, um, so can I ask a question real quick? Please, please. All right. So did you go with um the seven because the nine is a zero for that node how come you went 287 instead of 289 okay excellent excellent question uh so the reason that i so you, you're asking why like why did i draw the the blue circle in this way like why didn't why didn't i draw the blue circle like this right yeah okay excellent question so the reason i drew the blue circle like this is because this is the this is the this is the node that causes the problem. Seven causes the problem, right? See if um, if seven wasn't there, and well, more specifically, if the child of seven wasn't there. So if if five wasn't, oops, if five wasn't here, and assume that we're just looking at this as a self-contained subtree. And I'm sorry, this is getting messy. Yeah. But if we were looking at this tree, this this is balanced, right? Because two in this case would have a balance factor of negative one, right? So the reason I pick the subtree with seven is because seven is the part of the tree that causes the problem. As you can see, uh, specifically when we're calculating this, this uh, balance factor here, remember it's height, of left minus height of right. Uh, the height of uh, height of the left subtree is just this right here. And then the height of the right subtree is three. So one minus three, therefore it's negative two. Uh, specifically, we draw the blue circle around the tree that gave us this number. And the tree that gave us that number was this, if that makes sense. So essentially you just have to identify where the problem came from. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Thank you. Okay. Well, and I, I'm so sorry, y'all. This is such a hard topic. If y'all are hanging in there, I, I'm so thankful for your attention and your patience. Uh okay. So let's go ahead and let's keep let's keep getting more silly. Let's just keep adding nodes. Look how goofy this is. Let's add a three. So we're here, and I think uh a three should be um let's see one thing um three is going to be wait did i did i mess this up uh oh i did mess this up yo i'm so sorry uh so i added five in the wrong place so if if y'all didn't catch me on that I, I don't blame you at all uh this is like to add five to this tree, like back when I said we have to take care of seven's children, you would start at the at the root and then five is less than seven, so it would have to come here. So I messed it up. That's that's on me. I always make mistakes in these videos. It's, I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh I don't think that changes the fact that this is balanced, though. Which is probably why I was a little bit off. Uh this is what negative one. Okay, so this tree is clearly still balanced. Um add three so three would be here right i think hopefully uh let's go ahead and compute these balance factors which uh in this case is going to be zero and then one uh and then negative one and one okay so we haven't broken the tree so we can continue adding nodes uh let's add six so now we're adding six to the tree which should be here i think um, and now we're going to have to recompute these. So uh, six is going to have balance factor of zero, one, one. Okay, so still balanced. We're still good. We still didn't blow it up. Uh, let's add four. 
and C4 would be added here. And I think I think we have been too lucky for too long. I think we now must rebalance. Uh, yeah. So we got zero, negative one, one. Yep, yep, we broke it. We broke it. Okay, as you can see, we have illegal balance factors. We broke it. So now we must rebalance. So uh, it seems to be our issue is here. Two, five, and three, I think, uh, seems to be our issue. So let's go ahead and draw that out here. So we've got two, five, three. Uh, this is going to be, which case is this? Two, five, three, as we can see, this is going to be a double right rotation. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, represent that. So first we're going to swap five and three. So two, oh. Oops, my bad. Yeah, if I if I'm making mistakes on this, uh, it's because it's a really really tough topic. Uh, okay, and then it's from here it's a left rotation, so three, two, five. So this is this is what we've got to now plug back into our tree. So the nodes on top of it don't actually move. So seven is still in the right place. Eight is still in the right place. Nine is still in the right place. Uh, now we're going to insert three, two, five. So this was, this, this was our blue structure. Uh, and let's see. So we have to handle the children of two, which in this case is one. We have to handle the children of five, which in this case is six. And the children of three, which in this case is four. Okay. And now let's see if we broke it. Uh, and I think we're good. Okay, so we're still balanced. And again, this is so this is so tough. Um, I'm probably gonna expect that y'all are gonna like review this on your own time. Oh, so is... real quick. Um, yes. So what is uh? Can you repeat that? Uh, what is the definition of a balance for say for the seven? Yeah. Uh. So seven is gonna be the balance is gonna be the height of the left. Uh, minus the height of the right subtree, which as we can see, the height of the left subtree is going to be three, and then the height of the right subtree is going to be two, uh, and that's going to equal one. Oh, I mean, so uh, if uh, if the number if the uh, if the balance will be uh, is like minus one or or zero or one is is considered balance. Yes, yes, and that okay. that is arbitrary. So you could have you could have um, where did where did we formalize this? Uh, okay, I guess we haven't formalized the definition, but yeah, let's let's just uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, as a side note, just formalize that real quick. So AVL tree. Uh, see all nodes balance. Uh, let's say it's included in the set. So there you go. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, that's our formalization. Okay, we're almost done. Oh man, I, I feel I feel bruised and battered. Uh, the example on the slides had six nodes to insert, and I did ten here. So y'all y'all are troopers for sticking with it. Now we've got to insert zero. I think this is our last one. So zero is going to be here. Um, and let's go ahead and recompute. Uh, oh, so let's see. Uh, probably need to get rid of this too. Okay, so. Uh, Got zero, one, two, uh, and yeah, as you can see, two breaks it. Uh, one and uh, four minus two is two. Okay, yeah. So as you can see, we broke it here. So, uh, oops. Yeah. So we broke it. Um, and we've got. Two, one, zero. So I'm actually not going to go up to the top. Hopefully by now y'all can just kind of like see what needs to happen. This is going to be a single right rotation. So uh, this needs to look like this. Uh, and then you're going to have to plug this back in. And as you can see, this is not a big deal here, not dealing with children.
So it's not a huge deal here. And let's go ahead and redraw our tree. So everything else was the same. So seven, eight, nine. Uh, actually, I'm, I did that too fast. Seven, eight, nine. Uh, and we got what? Uh, three, five, six, four. So three, five, six, four, five. And then let's plug in what we just did, this. Okay, and then hopefully this will be all well and good. Uh, okay, and this is balanced once again. So uh, that was a lot. I'm gonna stop here. Uh, yeah, this is about as much as I can take. Uh, this 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 subject is tricky, y'all. This is not easy. Um, so just as a very quick recap of what we did, we formalized a tree to have zero and between zero and two children per node. Uh, we decided that the height of the tree is in, is very important. The height of the tree can either be better or worse depending on how balanced it is. Uh, balance is formalized as this uh, this formula right there. Uh, in order to maintain balance in a tree, we can perform operations at every insert. So this is uh, done during insert. Um, and we can see these, these four test cases all converge upon the same balanced insert. Uh, we did an example on this list of numbers. This is our bad case. And let's just go ahead and point out right here that the height here of this tree is, um, this is seven, this is terrible. And what we what we came up with at the end, uh, which of t is equal to three. So finding an element in this, this, this ideal tree, well, not quite ideal, but close to ideal tree that you see here is gonna be a lot more efficient than this, this original guess that we had right here. Anyways, we walked through, um, uh, walk through the inserts, and at each insert, every time you insert a node, you're going to have to uh, recompute the balance factor uh, of all of the parent nodes. And as you can see, this gets really tedious really fast. Uh, and then as soon as you've picked your AVL rotation, you plug it back into the tree where it belongs. Uh, and I hope that you didn't mess anything up. So. Again, I'm so sorry for the complexity of this. Really, uncontrolled complexity is your worst enemy in most cases. Uh, yeah, I did record this. So like I hinted at before, if you got stuck at the balancing, please go back and rewatch the recording. Uh, if you get stuck at the rotations, go rewatch. And if you get stuck at the actual implementation, go rewatch. This is mad confusing, y'all. This is mad confusing. Um, but if you made it this far, again, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate y'all being patient. And can you can you kind of see why like I did jump the gun on this slideshow? But this was supposed to be one week in review. Like like all all we went through was this, but we were supposed to get through all all of this next week. This like no no way. So next week we're going to be looking at red black and two four trees. Hopefully you all got a really, really good taste of AVL. Hopefully that prepares you. Uh, okay, uh, questions. I think I scared y'all, I'm so sorry. Uh, so if there are no questions, um, then- I have, I have one for oh, PA4. Yes, yes. Yeah, for, for PA4, like when we're making the uh, the, the trees we'll have to like write a recursive algorithm that resets the root each time to like like the next like the next node right the the child node of the previous root yes each time and that'll be, yeah and for that i would just pick one so i would i maybe in the github they've specified that you want to use minimal uh right tree or maximal left tree but if they don't specify then just make a choice and stick with it okay yeah yeah. And ju just to clarify, the reason I spent a whole week in review on AVL trees is like, this will be on an exam, but don't panic. This will not be in a PA. You will not have to code this. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Balance on this one. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Uh...